the sun. What's happening, what's happening is the Rare Argoon Tream Hef again with episode two of Coachella Magazine. And I'm here with an uh, American contemporary artist based in California, recognized for her neo surrealism paintings. That's right. And Faith Nichols. Hi. I said it right? Said it right, Anne okay. Faith Nichols, but you can call me Anne. Okay. So where did you grow up? Did you grow up out here in California? I'm actually originally from Canada okay. and Victoria, British Columbia, uh -huh. and um, grew up in the Northwest between Victoria and Seattle. Okay. Went to school um, in San Francisco and eventually made my way down south to LA, and now I'm recently relocated to Palm Springs. Okay, so it was okay. A, Long, slow journey down the coast. I can dig that. That's a good yeah. journey, though. Like mm -hmm. a little, was it the Oregon Trail? Did that go the, the same way, maybe? Well, that's through Oregon. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, the same sk idea? I skipped over Oregon. Okay. But, um, you said you went to school in San Francisco. So was that art school or was that high school? Yeah, I went to art school, okay. um, the Academy of Art in San Francisco. Okay. I lived right downtown and. I lived in all the neighborhoods in San Francisco, uh -huh. moved around a lot for uh -huh. about 10 years there, and then moved to L.A. in uh, 2008. Okay. Yeah. So, what, of all those, I also read somewhere that you moved to Paris? Yeah, I lived in Paris for a okay. little while, uh -huh. spent some time in Amsterdam and Spain, okay. so definitely moved around a lot and so, worked in a lot of different places. So of all those places, which place brought you like the most inspiration? That would be Catechez, Spain, which is where Salvador Dali lived. Ooh. And I've spent some time there and uh, recently I went and stayed on an olive farm there with just no internet, no phone service for mm -hmm. about a month and it was awesome. You said an olive farm? Yeah, an olive farm. Wow. Where they harvest the olives with the nets and um, it was a family that's been there since the 20s, okay. since before the main road was built into the town. It's a little coastal town mm -hmm. on the eastern coast of Spain, okay. and it's where Dolly, Salvador Dali built his house, so you can go see the house. And it's so cool. That's crazy, because I yeah. see through um, a few of your paintings, the pageantry of vision mm -hmm. and the subconscious observer, yes. you have like... Uh, I don't. I want to say maybe a similar motif as Dolly. I could see like it come out in like the background and like the 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 smoothness and the in the um, like aesthetic of your paintings. So is yeah. he like your biggest inspiration? Well, um, I have a lot of inspiration that comes from a lot of different places. But one thing about surrealism is that it relies on the subconscious mm -hmm. to um, of both the viewer and the painter. The painter's kind of relying on you know, the subconscious thought. And when the viewer views the piece, um, it's about recognizing symbols that make you feel something or that you associate something with. So I use a lot of symbolism, like okay. the heart, fire, raindrops, and like on a landscape plane, similar to what Dolly did. I, I mm -hmm. like to try to layer yeah. planes. So yeah. you might find some similarity in that. But other than that, I'm really inspired by technique-wise, Carrie James Marshall. I think okay. is just the master of technique and layering like that. And uh, I love the photography of Cindy Sherman working, playing with identity. Mm -hmm. I'm all about exploring your identity and making art that makes people think about their own identity. Yeah. So what like emotion do you feel like comes out most often in your paintings? Well, lately it's been a lot of girl power. Okay. <laughs> I don't know I if that's an emotion, that. an empowered <laughs> emotion, uh -huh. I guess is what I've been working with. And uh, I have a whole series of female focused pieces right now that I just released Okay. Um, that will be showing at the LA Art Fair. So um, mm -hmm. a lot of it is um, a lot of women, a lot of kind of feelings. It was a heavy year last year mm -hmm. with a lot of feeling. It was. That definitely came out in my work. I feel that. Whether I can help it or not, it always just kind of comes out. So I guess a lot of emotions with how society was really dealing with things last year. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot. Last year was probably the biggest year in the history of mankind of like stuff coming out that was like in the dark. Yeah. It, was, it, it got deep last year. Yeah. Uh, 2018, 2017, it got deep. So I know yeah. your paintings, uh, what, what word do I want to use? I, I, I guess conveyed that. Yeah. 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 
So you said you went to school. What was for? I feel like a lot of people, um, they feel like they have to go to school mm -hmm. to do what they have to do. Some people do, some people don't. I feel like if it's your calling, go ahead and do it. If yeah. it's not, don't. But what was the most valuable tool that you learned in art school that, that you can know, that you applied to this day in your art? Oh. Well, first I have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. School is totally not necessary yeah. for anyone to become an artist. Mm -hmm. That said, for me, I was the first woman in my family to go to college, mm -hmm. and I really feel like my degree legitimized my practice. I feel that. Um, but really, for me, going to school was moving away from home, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like getting away from what I was used to, moving into an urban environment with lots of different people that I may never have met before, that I was pushed together with, and just that convergence of ideas and people all striving to do some new interesting things, all experimenting. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to school in San Francisco like 90, 98 through, two, I was there, 98 through 2008. So at that time there was still a lot of artists in the city. And yeah. so for me it was just the people that I was around. But the art history for me, I'm so into art history and I love hearing about the history of art and that's really helped me in my practice now, think about the way I do my work. So the history of art is- Oh yeah. Really, yeah, I've, yeah, once I went to college and studied art, I took this art history class, it was six mm -hmm. hours a week. Yeah. And I really realized that I loved art. And we were just looking at slides the whole entire time going through all the periods. And I was yeah. just like, wow. And then we had, we'll have a test at the end of the week. And I was like, wow, I really enjoy learning about like how mankind was yeah. conceptualized, I guess. Yeah, and I've like, that's something, like I went and I study, I did a study abroad program with my school in Italy. Mm -hmm. And I did this whole art history tour. And ever since then, every single trip that I've ever taken that I've saved up money for to take, it's all been focused around seeing major works of art. Just okay. because it's just, there's nothing like seeing it in person yeah. and learning about it. So yeah. I try to always be an art student. I think that that's the biggest takeaway is that you're never really, if you're an artist, you're always going to be a student. Always. To you're always you going to be looking, if you're a designer, yeah. musician, you're always studying other art. Yeah. You know? so and you're you'll, always never, a you'll never master it. You yeah. can get no, very you, good. No, you You can you become won't. very good. You can become a legend. You can become rich, but you'll never master no. it. No. It's just impossible. That's like, isn't that so frustrating, but also relieving? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Those, those are the, the perfect explanation. Yeah. Frustrating and relieving. Yeah. Because I've definitely felt, I feel like I go back and forth between both of those emotions. Like when I complete something that's epic, I'm like, ah. Yeah. And then when you're starting something again, you're like, oh my God. Yeah. I can't wait till it to get, for it to get to this phase, you know what yeah. I'm saying? To where it looks good, I yeah. guess, you know? And there's so much that to get to that ah uh, point, letting yeah. yourself yeah, exactly. say ah uh, about your work, or, especially with so much feedback that artists have these yeah. days. It's hard to just think about what you think about your piece. You exactly. Know? So do you like um, collaborating with other artists? I've seen that you collaborate. I do. With I mean, Sophia Enriquez, a person Sophia who we Enriquez. mutually know. Yes. So Sophia, what's happening? Hi, Sophia. It was good, man. I think you're brilliant. <laughs> I do too. You, you like collaborating with other artists? Well, I found Sophia's work. Um, mm -hmm. She was showing some work at the Ace, and I talked to her, and I was just like really taken by her. And, and then I went and checked her out online, and I just loved her work. I loved that she was a girl coming up, doing her thing right here locally. Yeah. That was really cool to me. But also like expanding on into LA and Venice and um, with fashion and art and she was crossing mediums. So I reached out to her. I opened, a, well I started this project, a female collaboration project, AFN okay. Collection. And I reached out to her to do a big canvas together, like uh -huh. work on a, we have this huge nine foot canvas. Uh -huh. And first I painted some, and then she painted some, and then I painted some. It was really a weird process, mm -hmm. but when we both saw the final thing, we were really excited about it. So I, I think I've I I seen that on your, it has something to do with relationship. Yeah, right? it's called Also, and okay. you'll probably see it behind me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's called Also, 
and it's a painting about collaboration itself. There's two figures in it, and mm -hmm. it's about coming together. And there's all sorts of little symbols throughout the painting that all allude to togetherness, okay. to how two is more powerful than one. Mm -hmm. So in the spirit of collaboration, we did that one. That's dope. Yeah. I haven't done too many collab pieces, mm -hmm. but I feel like that's where you learn to like to give and get as far as like letting somebody else do their thing and then yeah. you do your thing. It's not all about control and like your vision. You kind of yeah. like round everything together. We have together. so many tattoos though. That's collaboration it, it in is. the highest form. It is. I've done and I've actually let the artist yeah. um, draw and then I've drawn some and then he did them on me. So I've kind of done both. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, gotta, you, you know, you got to gotta get creative sometimes you know yeah i have no tattoos not one i could never commit to the art you. you know i've committed to a lot yeah you <laughs> really have i love that i'm eight thousand dollars deep now oh wow yeah. i love that thank I mean, you thank you i love I tattoos it. i just you just too scared to get one no it's just i know i would get sick of it you I know feel you. i would have to have it some way that i could never possibly see it <laughs> <laughs> somewhere deep within <laughs> I, I feel you i feel you so besides art, I read that you were Vans brand ambassador for a I little was, bit. yeah. Shout out to Vans. Did you enjoy that experience? Oh man, Vans is a wonderful uh, company. Not only have their clothes always been iconic with artists, mm -hmm. counterculture, skaters, you know, you name it. But yeah. they've always been really supportive of artists and they reached Definitely. out to me early in my career and put me in their whole winter line, shot me in my studio. Okay. Uh, and it was amazing. They sent me to Sundance two years in a row, Sundance wow. Film Festival. Yeah. So I'm always pleased to work with um, brands that recognize artists and their work. That's tight. Because yeah. Vans is definitely like California culture, like to the fullest. Yeah. As far as like how they get the, just in, I feel like the aesthetic, nothing really changes too often you know what i'm saying but like the brand is like perfectly done yeah know? everybody everybody can have like a little a little piece of it doesn't it, it's never really too far out it's no. never really too crazy it's just perfect it's just nice california norm core i love it yeah. no, <laughs> norm, norm core <laughs> so do you do you envision yourself maybe getting into fashion a little bit absolutely i mean yeah i love fashion mm -hmm. Any kind of fashion project is cool with me. Yeah, because you, you do predominantly art and mm -hmm. workshops, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I mostly paint, but um, I worked with van or Ket Vans, and then I also did a Keds shoe. Okay. So, um, but, you know, I would, the dream would be to do a Goyard suitcase. Oh, okay. Yeah. The high, the high yeah. end. Top I would love dog. to do a, a Goyard suitcase. That's dope. So, That's dope. Do you know anybody with Goyard? Uh, no. Okay. Not real. Okay, well, let me know. I know a couple of people with some fake. Okay, no, <laughs> I, I, might settle for, I might settle for that. <laughs> I could settle for that. Okay. <laughs> I could paint on that. <laughs> I haven't, uh,. Yeah, I haven't actually seen anybody with real. Because I can could, I could tell that the fake it just looks a little bit. Mm, you just tell. It's like, nah, that's not, that's not the real deal. I don't know if I could tell a fake. I can. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well. I bought enough, like, uh, oh, really? luxury items. It's, 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 it's a little more pristine on the edges. The leather's a little more clean. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it just looks, it's a different vibe. So as far as um, workshops, you have a workshop mm -hmm. coming up, right? Yes, I have a neo-surrealism workshop that yeah. I'm leading at the Palm Springs Art Museum uh -huh. on January 19th and 20th. So it's a two-day workshop, which is, you know, two days, but it's going to be super fun. Okay. And it's going to be from 10 to 2 on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And uh, the people that sign up for the workshop, all skill levels are welcome. And we're going to be painting and exploring mm -hmm. the museum's collection. We're going to get some special access to some special pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be in the museum workshop facility, which is really impressive. The Palm Springs Art Museum has such a beautiful collection. Mm -hmm. It's a great uh, smaller museum that has a really big city collection and it's just really an honor to be doing the workshop I've there. Never been. Oh you've never been. You gotta I've go. Drove I'll take by you. So many times. I'll take you. So when is your when is your the nineteenth uh, and the twentieth of January. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. Up. What time is it? Um, from 10 to 2 okay, each cool. day. 
And right now, I believe there's a great show on called Unsettled, um, all about artists of the West. Mm -hmm. And they have some really cool pieces there. So okay. you might want to check that out. And it's all artists from like the West. It's artists that came out and worked in the West. I I, I hope I'm saying this right. I didn't organize the show, but um, it's artists that were working in the West. I think from the 50s on into contemporary art, like okay. on the West Coast of America, mm -hmm. California, Nevada. And the show was originally at the Nevada Art Museum, I believe, and then okay. they came over here but it's a really nice show okay. and it'll be up while my neo-surrealism workshop is up so anyone that comes to the workshop will be able to see the show I'm too. I have to check that yeah. out so are you going to be doing a little bit of teaching up there? Oh absolutely I'm going to be in my artist's apron uh -huh. we're going to be painting together we're going to be drawing together we're going to be um, studying some there's a book that Salvador Dali wrote called 50 Secrets of Magical Thinking. Uh -huh. Has all these weirdo things that he did before painting okay. to get into the zone. And we're gonna be experimenting with some of those. Uh -huh. One thing we're not gonna do that Dolly did do is I heard that every morning he woke up and ate eight sea urchins out of, which they're really plentiful there in Catechez, but Sea urchins, if you eat too many, they can kind of be a little psychotropic. Okay. So he was probably a little loopy yeah, when he was starting yeah. in could, on his I painting. Could, I could definitely We're not going to do that. that at the workshop, but we are going <laughs> to do a few other things, weird things that he he did, and kind of see how that taps into our subconscious when we're mm -hmm. putting paint on the campus. Okay, so you're going to be kind of guiding people into actually getting into surrealistic creation? Yeah, Or just any type of creation? No, we're together, we're going to create a surrealistic painting. That's Everybody's tight. going to walk home with their own surrealistic painting that they made. Mm -hmm. And um, who knows what will come out. It'll be interesting to see what people make. But That's tight. I definitely would say don't be shy. And it's, it's going to be a fun workshop to experiment for people that like to get some paint on their hands. Yeah. yeah. So what type of uh, mediums do you use? Um, well, I use acrylic paint, mm -hmm. but I was trained in oil paint. Okay. But I like acrylic paint right now because it dries fast and I yeah. can create more. Yeah. Um, but I'm used to both, and I'm really into painting on uh, grommeted canvases. Oh, um, and I learned that from Carrie James Marshall at his retrospective at the Whitney, um, I think two years ago in New York. Uh -huh. He painted this whole um, series of project paintings on these massive canvas tarpaulins. So I had these tarps ordered and I did all this distressing. So I've been painting on grommeted uh, tarps and then I've been really into old antique charts like that you find at like a Paris flea market or a Budapest, you know, thrift mall, like those old charts of anatomy and stuff. So oh, okay, okay. I've kind of created my own version of those old charts and that's inspired by the Odd Fellows movement, which is like a fraternal um, art movement. Uh, it was when called, was that? Um, the Odd Fellows were probably the early 1800s through the 1970s. I mean, there's still Odd Fellows buildings uh -huh. now. It's really cool stuff. You should check it out. Damn, I have to I have to do some research and I've never heard yeah. of it. It's kind of an underground fraternal men's only organization and they had all these ceremonies and stuff, but they really made some amazing craft um, folk art in mm -hmm. that movement. And the Museum of Folk and Craft in New York had an exhibit about the Odd Fellows a few years ago and I went and saw it. It was so inspiring and I loved the way that they had crafted these charts. So I'm doing that with my canvases now just to kind of get off the stretch canvas. Okay. I do a lot of traditional stretch canvas with yeah. the frame, but you know, they say if you have an artist block, the first thing to do is to switch up your materials. Mm -hmm. So I usually um, really try that first if I'm feeling a, like a little block and I've been liking the results playing okay. with new materials. I like the um, raw canvas. I feel like it has more of like a soul when the paint hits yeah. it. It like manipulates a little bit and yeah. it, has, it just has it just has more of a texture. Yeah, I love texture. Yeah, me too. Playing with different textures. I love, you know, rubbing some like scratching something up. Yeah, yeah. And I do um, sculpture too. Okay. Like cut out wood sculpture. I did some Trump Lloyd books that look like three dimensional objects 
but when you get up close you realize it's a flat thing out of cut out wood so I do mm -hmm. a lot of wood cutouts sculpture I mean I have a big art compound house in Palm Springs and okay. I'm working inside outside That's so tight. and Palm Springs gives you like the freedom yeah. and like the the clarity as far as like headspace too I know when I come out here I just feel like more free thinking you know opposed yeah. to being in other places you, yeah. you and you've been out here for how long well, we, um, my husband and I bought a house out here five years ago, but this mm -hmm. is really our first year and a half that we've been here full time. We okay. were back and forth in LA okay. a lot, but we're just now pretty full time. So comparative, where does Palm Springs compare? It's like... I mean, apples and oranges. Apples and oranges, I feel you. But, I mean, I love LA. There's, you can't beat it, yeah. but um, I really like... Uh, I couldn't, you know, it's really hard to be a working artist and a business owner in L.A. with the rents. And quite frankly, we were priced out. So we came out here to get a little bit more space. And, yeah. and now, lo and behold, the city is like popping off. Like my yeah. friends keep coming every weekend to visit me and <laughs> like get creative inspiration. They're staying at my house. I have people staying over at my house like every week now. That's tight. This is, Palm Springs is definitely becoming that. And I've been coming here maybe for like a decade. So I've really seen like the growth in Coachella yeah. and like how many people coming out, the bar scene. Yeah. Like, everything is kind of like took a, a uprise yeah. over like this past decade. So I know in the next five years, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. Here. And just like the kind of people that you see around more, there's like so many more young artistic people. Yeah. It's it's awesome, you yeah. know, especially the downtown area now is really coming up. And yep. Downtown is, is great. Oh, yeah. And they just built that little... When you're driving down to 111, the right side? Yeah, the like side a, street with the museum. Yeah, just they got there. all yeah. types of new stuff going on yeah. over there. Yeah, and they did Pride there this this year. They moved um, the Pride Parade to that back street okay. instead of down 111. It, it was really a different vibe, and I really liked it. It was really fun. Oh, the, the street to the right of the 111? I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah, because it was on smack dab in yeah. 111. Yeah, and no now cars it's on could the offshoot. In. And okay. up there, yeah. And as far as like um, canvas, I see that you have like a lot of big canvases. That's yeah. how I am too as an artist. Do you like predominantly like the bigger canvas as opposed to like being boxed in in a small canvas? I find it way easier to paint bigger. Me too. Same I way. mean, and I definitely spend the same amount of time yeah, yeah, on big you. as I would small. <laughs> you just have to like noodle more, you I know? I feel you, yeah. You know, it's the bigger ones, it's hard because people don't have a lot of space. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, you take that chance, and the right collector will find it yeah. with the right space. And I've been really fortunate to be able to make some big pieces. So. Okay, yeah. So, what's your biggest one? Um. Wow. I saw. Uh, gosh, I think my biggest piece is probably ten feet by ten feet. Okay, right so that's now? like. Kind of like, I mean, I, maybe like the wall. this is a green screen, so I don't know what kind of spatial things I would be pointing <laughs> to right now, but about, you know, half of this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. damn, that's huge. That's probably, yeah. the, that's probably about my biggest. Too. Ten, 10 by 10? Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. So you build frames for them, or? Um, I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've built frames, or they're on grommeted tarps. Okay. Or stretched. I have stretched really nice museum stretched canvases done. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also see you have like the the little. I don't know if that was what you were talking about with the tarp. It has like the little holes. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. you could that's yeah, the and then you tarp. nail them up. Yeah. Okay, that's dope. Yeah. I have to actually steal that idea. Yeah. From you. That's a very very good idea. Well, look to Kerry James Marshall. Look him up okay. and check out how he did it because he was he did it well. Okay, because yeah. I have some that are very, very big, and I have so much paint on them, and they're so heavy yeah. that when I pin them up, like they start to rip. Oh, in the, yeah. In the little, in the little seam, that just starts to like hang down, you know. Yeah. So I definitely have to take that idea. Yeah, they're kind of hard to find. You have to find um, someone that's willing to make the raw mm -hmm. um, tarps, and not the treated ones. That's the only okay. trick. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna be having the workshop. On yep. the 18th, 19th? The 19th and 20th is the workshop at the Palm Springs Art Museum. From what time? 10 to 2. 10 and to you 10. can find out more at PS Art Museum. PSArtMuseum.com. And how do we find you on social media? Oh, um, I'm Ann Faith Nichols okay. on Instagram. 
Um, you can also check out AFN Collection. Okay. And then there's just my website, AuntFaithNicholsArt.com, or okay. you can Google me. Okay. And I'll be at the LA Art Show with Red Truck Gallery at the Little Topia booth mm -hmm. on January 23rd through 27th, and you can find out about that at LAArtShow.com. Okay, I see yeah. she got it down packed. <laughs> she laid it all out for y'all. A lot no, going no, on. No Twitter or nothing? <laughs> I don't do Twitter. Good. I don't have, I mean, the things that I have to say, I say it in my work. <laughs> Good. So. That's perfect. It's a perfect description. Yeah. Good. I like that. So you heard it here from Ann Faith Nichols, the very talented neo surre surrealistic artist. Yes. And she has a workshop coming up next week. Yes. Is that next week or is that the week That's after next? That's next weekend, yeah. Next weekend. Yeah. So you guys should come check that out. This is episode two of Coachella Magazine.